Hi there. In this video, I'm going to be continuing the series of our AI, and we're going to be adding blood effect, and we're going to be synchronizing the machete to the killing of the zombie. So if we actually play this right now, what will happen is this. So we go, and if we try and kill our zombie, And the fourth, immediately after I clicked the fourth, he died, even before we swipe. And that is because we register the hit as soon as we click, and not as soon as the animation plays. Um, I mean, at the point where we want uh, the machete slashing at the zombie, right at that point, we want to apply the damage, not when we click. So we're going to be fixing that, and we're also going to be adding a blood effect to our zombie, which I actually, uh, I think it popped up there, that one. It's just a, a particle system. So first, we're going to want to do our our blood effect. So I have uh, this particle system that I made, which is basically some particles that are red, and they drop. To make this particle, honestly, if you want a better effect, you probably want to get one from the acid store. If you know how to make one, you probably want to make a better one. But for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to use this. Um, so to make a particle system, go to particle so game object particle system so you're gonna create this particle system and um, what you want to do is um, rotate it so the blue forward axis is, is facing forward then you're going to want to make the particle smaller uh, point one works you go into emission here in this tab and you want to well, I mean, go to shape first, and you want to uh, make the cone where it starts smaller. So by default, it's in a cone. That's what we're going to be using. So you see uh, these little handles here in the cone. Well, we want to make the starting point smaller to simulate like a hit, right? Like a wound. So it's going to be a starting point small. We're also going to reduce the size of the cone here. We're going to increase the number of particles em emission by you rate over time is try 100 um, so now we have more particles then what we want to do is activate our force over lifetime tab and then go to our Z and put minus 50 no not Z I mean Y minus 50 and make sure that space is in world there we go so now it looks like we have like a trickling water effect, but um, we're not quite there yet. Then what we want to do is go into color over lifetime, enable it, click on this editor here, and what we want, so the fade works, so it looks nice when an, each particle is instantiated. We want to make like a, a fade effect. To do that, we're just going to select the top node here which is the alpha we're going to make it completely transparent on this side we're going to also going to make it completely transparent on this side then we're going to add another node by just clicking and then we're going to make it completely opaque we're going to then make add another node and move it around here make it also completely opaque and now we get this nice transition from transparency both when it's instantiated and and destroyed um, the next thing is the bottom one is signify color. So we're going to start with maybe a bright red and end it with a maybe a darker red. We're going to click this and make a darker red. So now the particle has color. Maybe you want to make the, the starting color even darker there and maybe the, the ending color even darker. I think that looks honestly it doesn't look good but it works um, the next thing that we want to do is add a burst so actually put rate over time zero here and we're going to add the below here where it says burst we're going to click this, uh, this plus icon we're going to put a number of particles which let's try 200 and 300 respectively um, and now we have our burst and each time it instantiates a burst each time we simulate it it makes like a small burst of particles so 
I want to make it uh, spread a little bit more so we can move the cone more spread out. So it spreads out more. Uh, we can enable our velocity over lifetime and increase the velocity of the Z or Z axis by uh, try 10 maybe there it launches more but no that's too much to try one okay that's good enough I don't know if that's better or my previous particle was better I don't know let's try how my previous particle uh, I think this one is slower so just lower the speed play around with the variables on it there's um, more in-depth tutorials on making a particle system so I'm just gonna use the first one which I think is better um, so I'm gonna delete the previous one but that's the basics on how to do it um, if you want to see my settings I'm gonna open it all up if you want to just copy the first one which is a little bit better uh, just pause the video and copy what I have over here and here I actually didn't change anything in the render but just copy everything that I have enabled here. That should be it. Anyways, I'm going to delete our previous particle system. And the the one, whichever particle system you're using, you're going to want to make a prefab of it. So I'm going to make a folder here. We call it prefabs. We're going to add our particle system here, which we're going to rename to plot artifact. Make it a prefab. So now we can delete our blood effect, and each time we drop it, we have a blood, uh, blood effect. So now what we want to do is instantiate it when the machete is slashed at the zombie, right? So first, what we what I want to do is fix the animation sinking problem. Um, so when we actually slash at the zombie, the damage is applied and not before. So to do that, we want to open our machete animations animator. Go to uh, the machete of course um, go to the animator go to the attack animation we want to go to the specific animation which is attack and we're going to and in the, well it would be this model right so we're gonna open uh, click the the model make sure it's the FBX and then go to the attack animation we're using the basic attack I believe yes just the basic attack click it here in clips go down to events here open it up and we're gonna add a new event so click add event now we have our event to see this event is exactly in the point in the timeline where we're gonna apply the damage to the zombie so open up this uh, just click here and drag this preview window of the animation and if we click here on this uh, timeline we can actually just move and see how the animation goes throughout right so what we want to find in this animation is at which point should we apply damage at the zombie. So we're going to slide through and find in which point does he slash. So I think just in the middle of the slash. So he slashes, right? And the middle point of the slash would be like the best point to apply damage. So I think right about there is where we're going to apply damage. So we're going to drag our event right to that point, And we're going to call this we can give it a, no a name we're gonna call it uh, damage event right and then once you applied the event just make sure to hit apply and that'll save your change so now uh, now that we have our event we're gonna have to do a little bit of scripting to fix um, this is not gonna work just by itself so we're gonna have to make a new script and we're gonna just call it uh, attack event and what this is gonna do is receive the event so basically what we just did if this wants to load, what we just we, what we just did is is w when we made this event here what we basically did is told the animation to execute a function that's of a script that's attached to our object that has the animator component that has that animation attached right so um, what this is going to do is as soon as each time the animation is played it's going to go throughout the animation once it hits the event where we have it 
here as soon as it hits it's gonna it's gonna send that event to our game object where it's attached and whichever script that's attached here it will execute uh, the function with the name we gave it which is attack event so uh, or damage event I believe it was uh, ah, click this damage event so we're gonna have to create a function that's called exactly that name called damage event public void damage event and this is going to be executed every time the animation is played and we're going to have to have a reference both to the animator so we're going to make a actually no not to the animator we're going to need a reference to our uh, to our player script player example script we're going to open our player example we're going to need a reference because we're going to execute the fire function when that is hit and not the fire we're going to play the animation this animator we're going to play when we click but we're not going to execute the rest of the of the apply damage logic that's going to wait until the event is triggered so to start this first we want to remove our fire from here make sure fire is public because we're going to execute it outside the script um, remove this cut it and paste it here where fire was before but just put it when we click it's just going to play animation and then fire will be executed in the event so here we make a we need a reference we're going to actually make a private player example reference and we're PE for player example and we're gonna actually have to get a reference to this so we're gonna make void start PE equals get component in parents in parent player example and then here we're gonna do PE dot fire and that should be it. So let's see if that works. So don't forget to this attack event attach it to the machete or wherever the animator is. Attach it there and that should be that. So let's try that again. So now it should execute the event. It should the zombie should die as soon as we slash him the fourth time. So let's try that. One two three four you see and now it, it's not as soon as we click but rather when the animation is slashing so now it's it's definitely much better so now we want to add the blood effect and that is simple we just go back to our player example we're gonna need a, a reference to our blood effect so we're gonna make it public game object blood effect and we're gonna we're going to instantiate this at the point where we hit the zombie. So that would be here. If the point would be hit that point. We use the raycast hit information. That's the raycast we shoot in the forward direction of the zombie. And wherever we hit him, we're going to instantiate the blood effect particle. So to do this, we're going to use the instantiate function. Instantiate. The first one is the game object and we want to instantiate that would be our blood effect here which we're going to assign in a second oh wait let me put semicolon there we go so blood effect the next one would be the position yeah the position where we're gonna be instantiating this so that would be hit that point and finally um okay so i search for the last function for a rotation because I couldn't remember but it was quaternion dot look rotation and here we just input the hit dot normal which is basically this hit dot normal is the outward pointing direction of where we hit the zombie um, so yeah and this and this function creates a rotation based on that so we're gonna basically instantiate the blood effect at the point where we hit the zombie 
and looking outwards of the zombie. So the blood effect comes outwards from the zombie. So we save this. Um, we go back into Unity and make sure that you assign the blood effect to our blood effect here. So drag that, drop it, and now let's test that. So we hit the zombie once, we hit him twice, thrice, and now he dies. But there is one issue. The blood effects keep appearing wherever they were instantiated. So to fix this, to fix this, is we need to destroy them after a couple seconds. So we're gonna do a new script. Create C sharp. Uh, call it destroy. I'm just gonna open it up. We're going to delete all this. Make a flood, public float, time to destroy, which will be in seconds. Basically, the amount of seconds we are going to wait until we destroy. So we're going to instantiate the blood effect. It's going to play, and then in two seconds, we're going to destroy it. So we're going to make the void start. And the only thing we're going to do here is destroy game object, meaning this game object, and the amount of time which would be time to destroy. And that's that. And now we just assign the script to our prefab blood effect. I'm gonna place it in the world, go to scripts, assign our destroyer script, apply it, and then delete it here. And now our prefab has the script attached. Um, now we're going to play again, Let's see if that works. One, two, three. And if you notice the hierarchy here at the left, here at the left, if we, uh, if we actually hit the zombie, we can see that it instantiates a blood effect and then it's destroyed. So we don't see it in being the particle again. So. I guess that about sums it up for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, I'm going to be actually making the player die with all the effects and yeah, whatnot. So, yeah, I'm going to close it up here and thanks for watching.